So let's talk a little bit about, um, well, wait, I gotta get my hat. Let's talk a little bit about um, what, how we can build a list, a different implementation of a list using linkage, right? So using this idea of linking items together. And so we're gonna start small here. We're gonna start with uh, the simplest operation on a list like this, which is adding an item to the front. And you should note that this particular operation has some special properties to it in terms of how long it takes, in terms of its algorithm performance. Um, so, so as a reminder, here's the interface that we're eventually going to be implementing with our linked list. This is called a simple list interface. Um, and it has the interesting methods from the official uh, list interface provided uh, by, by Kotlin and by Java, um, but it trims off a lot of the unnecessary methods that we don't want to worry about. So we have get, set, add, and remove, and then a size method. All right, so what I want to start off by talking about is what happens when we actually use this inner class that stores a reference to another item. So this is how we're going to build our list up. And I just want to walk through a simple example of, of using this. Um, so, so here's, and, and we're going to use a diagram here to show what's happening. So I've got a variable here called items. Item stores a reference to an item. Now note that each item also stores a nullable reference to another item. So after line five executes, here's what things look like. I have my items variable, which stores a reference to this item that I've created with value zero. I'm gonna use that value to distinguish between the different items in my list. All right, so now, now this probably so far is, is working out for you, but, but here's where things are gonna get interesting. Okay, check this out. So there's a lot going on here. Let's unpack it one step at a time. The first, so here's what things look like after this finishes. I have a list, uh, item still holds a reference to my list, which I'm creating by linking things together, not by using an array. But item eight is now at the front and item zero is now at the end. So what happened here? This takes us all the way back to talking about assignment. What I did is I reassigned items. Okay, I reassigned it to a new item that I created on the right side of line six, but we need to think about the fact that the right side of line six executes first before the left side. So remember how assignment works. I execute the right side, and then in this case, I take the reference that's created when I create a new item and I use it to reassign my var items. So let's talk about the right side of line six. What happens on the right side? So I create a new item and the item constructor takes two arguments. It takes a value, which is eight, and then it takes a reference to another item. So what I pass is items. Now, when line six begins executing, items refers to the item with value zero that I created on line five. I haven't reassigned it yet. This is where things get a little tricky. So I do the right side of line six, items refers to the item with value zero. So when my new item that has value eight is created, its next reference refers to the item with value zero. So I create that new item with value eight. For a minute, I have two references to the item with value zero. I have the reference stored in the item with value eight as its next uh, property. And then I also have items. But after I'm done evaluating the right side of line six, I store the reference to the new item into my variable items. And so what I end up with, the reference to the new item in stored in the variable items, but my new item still has a reference to the item with value zero. And so we'll see what's happened here, this sort of magic, is that I have taken a list that had one item in it, and I've added an item at the beginning, right? Now, adding items at the end and in other places is going to turn out to be a fair amount more work, actually. But adding items to the beginning of this type of linked list is very straightforward. It can be done in a single operation. All right, let's look at another one. Um, here's what happens if I run basically the same line again. The same thing happens. When line seven begins executing, item stores a reference to the item with value eight that I created on line six. So my new item that has value five is initialized with its next reference storing a reference to the value with item, the item with value eight. Then I take the result of executing the right side, which is a new item, and I store its reference into my items variable. And so now what I have is a list with three elements. And you can imagine if I continue to do this, I'm adding elements to the list one at a time to the front, right? Okay, this bears repeating. So let's go through this one more time. I initially create 
Now, now if, if I had a bare items that was nullable, I could have an empty list, right? In this case, I created my reference variable and my first item at the same time, but I can have an empty list and we'll see how. Uh, the list class that we'll use will have a nullable uh, item reference. And so if it's null, there's no items in the list and it's empty. In this case, I created the first item at the same time I created my variable. So I cheated a little bit. Um, but what I have here is a list with one item in it. Items, this reference variable, stores a reference to the item that was created on the right. Now I execute line six. I execute the right side of the assignment first. I create a new item with value eight that, and I pass items to it as the next reference. So that item stores a reference to the item with value zero because when line six starts executing, item, item stores a reference to the item with value zero. You gotta give me some credit for getting all this terminology right, right? Like my mind is racing going through these things. Okay, uh, let's do one more. So on line seven, I execute the right side of line seven first. When the right side of line seven begins executing, items stores the reference to the item I created on line six, which is an item with value eight. So I create a new item with value five. Its next reference stores a reference to the item with value eight. And then when the right side of line seven finishes executing, I re uh, I, I change the value of items to refer to that new item with value five, which ends up putting five at the front of my list. So I start off with a list that is one item and I add two items to the front. Now, like I said, we'll talk about how to do this in the back as well, uh, but doing it in the front is much, much easier and can be done with a single line of code.